Hey everybody, welcome back to Rink's Garage. Today, we got some upgrades for the C10. Here we got six boxes from QA1. Wonder what's in them. Let's start cracking them open. <laughs> So in the last video, when we stripped her down and undercoated the frame, we noticed our front cross member was getting rotten. So had a decision to make, you know, do we try and find another one, weld up that one, or go a completely different route, which is what I did. So I got box one here. Let's crack her open, see what's inside. Well, that should solve our front cross member problem. And save us some weight. Cool. Front cross member, QA1. So let's see what's in the other boxes. Some mounting brackets. More brackets. Now we're talking. Tubular front A arms. Thicker, some paperwork. Another box inside the box. That, my friends, is a steering rack. More stickers. Fancy. Shocks. Springs. And some instructions. And a whole box. So, as you can see, we splurged a little bit on the front, but we're going to have full coilover, adjustable shock, front suspension from QA1. Looks a bit like a jigsaw puzzle right now, so we'll have to do a little bit of reading. I'm going to clean up all the boxes. It was packaged very well, so nothing looks broken or anything. Hopefully, we got all the parts. Let's see if we can figure out how to 
bolted on. All right, got my boxes cleaned up. So first thing, there she is, somewhat laid out. So we got a new center cross member, all new A-arm springs, and a steering rack. So we'll get better that, get rid of that big steering box on the side. It's gonna handle a lot better, and then this is also gonna improve our casters. So it'll come back to center better and just all around better feel driving it. These old 70s and 80s C10s are a little wobbly driving down the road, wander around. So, but first thing we gotta do is hoist that cross member up in there. So it's got one hole on each side which we will locate on the frame in the center hole where the old cross member was bolted. So see if we can get her bolted in. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, mount our cross member. And like I said, it's got one hole. We got three holes from the factory setting. We're gonna use that center hole. Bolts up from the bottom. And on your cross member, it's got these tubes for motor mounts. They gotta go towards the back. So. Squeeze her a little bit. There she went. Snug them up. And then I think we got to drill some holes. All right, now we got the bolt snugged up on the cross. Remember, we got to drill some holes. So start with, we got to drill out these two bottom ones on each side to three eighths and these top ones to half. So I'll take a center punch, punch center on all eight of them and get them drilled out. And as you can see, this cross member is quite a bit lighter along with the tubular A arms and such. We stand to gain about 150 pounds off of the truck. So. That'll help us. Plus we'll have steering rack, so she's gonna steer a lot better. So I'll get these uh, punched out and drilled and we'll bolt some more stuff on. Now we got our holes drilled. We're gonna leave these two out out because that's where the upper control arm is gonna go on. But we can put our three ace bolts in the bottom on each side, and then we got to do the same thing underneath. There's four three ace on each side, so I'll have to punch them and drill them out, and we can throw the bolts in there, and then we'll see what the next step is. But I'll get them drilled out and all bolted down, and we'll see what we got. As you can see, I got all my hardware laid out here, so there's quite a bit of bolts and nuts that come with it. But hopefully, we don't have any left over when we're done. All right, we got all our bolts in. Next thing we gotta do is locate the upper shock mount, which comes in the kit, so that just sits on the rail. It's got slotted holes here we're gonna have to drill out. So the slots in there, or just to account for if your frame is a different height. So basically, we set it on there, line up our slots in there, and then we'll throw a clamp on it. Make sure we're lined up, and then we will take our center punch, mark them two, and the top two. Now this top one is kind of on an existing hole so we'll have to be careful when we drill that out probably 
drill the three, get three bolts in so it'll stay there and then drill that one out. And then we'll all be half inch. So I will get both of these mounted up there and bolted down and continue on. All right, so I got my bottom four holes drilled and I got this shock mount up here with just some regular nuts on for now. So I'm gonna snug them up and then use that to drill my top ones just cause I was worried about it moving on me. So I'll snug them two bolts up, get these marked and drilled out. And then this one is almost gonna drill kind of funny beans worth going through a half a hole there. So probably just use this as a guide for the bit to go through, keep her from getting out of track. And then I'll do the other one on the other side and then we'll pull it off, clean it up. And then there is an inside bracket here that uses the same bolts. So I'll get them top ones drilled and then there's an inner frame bracket that's gonna tie this shock mount back to the cross member. So get her drilled out and bolted together. All right, we got our top holes drilled. As you can see, that one is offset in an existing hole. So for that, I marked it of course, and then just took a piece of quarter inch steel I had, put a half inch hole in it and just clamped it over the top to drill through to keep that bit from walking. Uh, there's a couple kinds of shock mounts evidently that come with this. There's like a welded steel one and then a cast looking one and it's fairly soft. As you can see, it's it might be aluminum, not sure. Feels too heavy for it. Anyway, I didn't wanna walk it over in there. So now we can go about bolting her up. So we'll get a shock mount outside like so. And then there's this inner frame mount that's gonna connect everything together. We'll go in from the inside and they share bolts. So set the camera up and we'll see if we can get her bolted on. So first we're gonna slide our inner bracket in. There's a left and a right to this. It's got a picture, but if you have it on the wrong side, it's not gonna line up. So this slide through them holes and it it's kind of like a stud, so I'm probably going to have to tap it through to get these other holes to line up. Hammer it out. Lay it on the ground. Get started. We might have to throw the bolts on and suck it through the hole to get these to line up. So, we should be able to... Throw this guy on, then we can put our bolts through the here and snug them up, pull that in. I might just pull it in without this on first. Normal nut on it, and then I can pull them studs in. It doesn't say anything about this in the instructions, so that's nice. Let's see what happens here. worked pretty good hold her in tight looks like this hole's pretty close so now take this hardware out maybe Ooh. there we go now we should be able to throw her these holes line up pretty good. Bottom ones look pretty good. So now we should be able to throw our hardware through there. Like I said, they give you a couple different sizes. So let's see what this looks like. I think he's gonna be about right for the top piece. It's gonna suck up a little bit, so. Of course they got an Allen head. I got ones. Looks like the ones are good too. So I might run the drill 
through these two just because they're a little snug. Bring them up a little bit. shortest ones in the top and the second longest ones in the side and they get a washer and a lock nut. Let's see how this looks. So that's going to be through the nut. That one is actually pretty close but I think it will suck up. So I'll get these in and then I think I'm going to get this bolt in here too because this is kind of holding the frame. So. By the picture, it looks like these ones go facing backwards. So we'll see if we can put that in there. Washer on both sides. And we'll throw our nuts and washers on there. Snug her down. All right, so these countersunk ones have 5 16 hex head. So we'll see if we can just snug them down. I don't really want to wrap on too hard with impact but get them tight and then we'll tighten it the rest of the way by hand I think like that and there we go she's all tied together on this side got our bolts in there I believe that's the end of drilling holes too so I will finish tightening these with a wrench it does say to Tighten them to 50 foot pounds. So I'll do my best to get close to that. But get this tightened, I'll get the other side thrown on, and then I think it's time for some control arms. All right, so we got everything tightened down. One thing I did not notice when I tightened it, this bracket on. So these two studs got knurling on them and it slid that out. So I had to take a hammer after I had this tight, pound them back through the frame. It's a little bit oversized, a half inch, so now the knurling is into the frame and that back bracket, so. But everything else went good. This one was a little tight. I actually had to put a clamp across the frame and bring it back this way, just a hair, but not bad. So, on to the A-arms. All right, so next thing, we got our driver's side A-arm. So we got ball joint up, torsion bar mount forward. For this one uh it comes with zip ties holding the bushings on not sure why but put our hardware in Oops. washer on each side and we'll just snug these up not tight until we get it in the mount like that all right, next on the agenda is our shock bracket. So they're arched. The arch will go down with the A-arm. This will go in underneath. And then raise it up. And these two brackets go through into this little. Whoops. It's easier to set this up. They'll go up in that bracket. And stick our bolt through. Another washer. Not on the back side. Snug him up and then same on the bottom. Washer. And the bottom's got a spacer go between them. So we need to slide him in between. Like that. That washer on that side. And we'll leave these loose until we get the shock in. And they are supposed to be torqued to 45 foot pounds. So there's our shock bracket. Now we got to throw a couple bushings in here. And then I believe we're ready to throw it on the truck. 
Now we're ready to install our bushings down here. Slide each of them in. And then there's aluminum spacer that goes in each end. I'm going to take a little bit of grease, put it on there just to hold it from falling out. As we slide that in, it be, might be kind of tricky. We like that. I'll throw the other one in and then we'll see if we can get her in. There is two sets of holes. We're going to go in the outer hole. The inner hole is for if you want to change your camber. So factory would be this hole. So we'll get her in there. All right. Now we are ready. We got some half by four bolts that are going to go in there. So get them ready. See if we can stick this arm in without knocking our bushings out of whack. Ooh, she is slightly tight. It's close. There she goes. Get her in there. and nut. And I believe them get tightened to 50 foot pounds. And once them are tight, we can tighten these to 45. So I'll get that tightened up. And then work on the uppers. All right, now that we got our lower A arm on, time for the uppers. So these are marked driver passenger. We got two shims with a beveled side. That's going to slide on your studs. And then your A arm will go on like so. We'll throw a nut and a washer on there. And then later, this is where the shims will go back there to shim up for our alignment. But I'll throw the nuts on here, snug them down. It says tighten them to 50 foot pounds. So I'll throw them on there. All right, now it's time to put our coil over together. So first thing we want to do, crack this jam nut loose, wind the top of the shock off, take your jam nut off. Then we'll put our bumps up on, taper going up. Slide him down. Wind our jam nut back on if you want. Next thing we gotta do, and this is gonna be with all this stuff, is anti-seize everything. I know that doesn't sound fun. You'll have it all over your face, and your mustache, whatever, but. The alternative is marring up all these threads. So we'll just put a coating around all these before we wind the stuff on and that'll spread it out as it winds it down. Once you get some on there, we'll take our lower mount with the shoulder facing up and wind him on. Run that all the way down to the bottom. Like I said, anti-seize is going to be everywhere. And 
get him right down against the bottom real close and we'll take our next mount again collar up wind him on all the way down against the jam nut And this kit comes with a thrust bearing for the bottom of the spring, which is nice. So that just consists of two stainless washers. Again, same thing. And I seize both sides. Flip her over. And I seize on this side. And slide that down. Sit on there. Take her bearing little shot and I seize on there and this is just going to make adjusting your coil over much easier and then finally the last washer again same thing and I seize both sides and Slide him on. So now you're set to put your spring on. So, you want to shock as far out as it'll go. Washer's down like that. Take our spring, stick that on. And then we also I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize around the top edge of your top cap where that this is going to be spinning on. So it slides down in the spring like that. And we can take our top piece, get that started, and wind it down to the jam nut. Tighten down, and in the instructions it says sneak a 7 8 wrench in there and tighten the jam nut. Which you definitely got to sneak it in because there's not much room. Now, all we got to do is put our spherical bearings in so basically you got snap rings throw one side in in the groove make sure you're in the groove both sides Roll it over, make sure they're centered up pretty good and we should be able to drop it in. I need to just tap it through. Like that. And then throw your snapping on the other side. And make sure you're in the groove all the way around. Make this one real crooked. This one does have a little bit of mar in there, but like that. last snap ring. in the groove and there you go the shocks are together I already did this one so now it's time to throw it in the control arms all right so now we're ready to install our coil over into the control arm so we got a bolt limiting cable and then this hourglass spacer with the shoulder out 
where that cable goes. And then we'll make sure our shock adjustment is facing outward. Stick him in. Slide the bolt through. And wash your nut on the inside. Like so. And then we're ready to go up to the top. You can saw that. And that also has a flat spacer with shoulder for the cable like this. And your bolt for the washer. And then on the top one, there's two little beveled pieces that got to go inside spacing between the shock. So we will lift her up and see if we can get it in. I don't know if I'm going to have to compress the spring to get it up all the way. Most likely, but we shall see. Stick this up in here now, Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, yes, we are. That is going to be tough. Okay, since I got a bare frame and no weight, we might have to do a ratchet strap scenario or something to get, basically we need to pull this down enough so that this, that's about an inch. And my shock is adjusted all the way off. So let me see what I can do and we'll compress this down so we can get that bolt slid in. One thing that would help is if I put the bolt in the right way. So if we come in from the other way, we can at least put our spacers on. Let's start it through the shock. Like that. We're just going to go in the center hole for now. Change our ride height a little bit with these adjustments. So, do like that. Spacer. Now we need to compress it. Oh, not too much, actually. This is all kind of loose still. So, all right. So, now I'll see if I can compress a little bit so we can get that on there. And then we just got a nut and a washer. Well, the strap didn't work. Not strong enough. So we're just going to leave it off until we get her on the ground, get some weight on it. And then we can compress it enough, pop this nut off. So I'll just snug this up for now. I got to throw the other side together. And then we'll be looking for some spindles, which I got to take off of that. So I'll throw the other side together and then we'll figure out how we're going to get them spindles off. All right. Got the other side all done. Got her down on the jack sand so she's a little lower. Before we put spindles in, we gotta throw the rack in. So it says we just slide the rack through this side and through. So we'll see if it fits. Then we got some five ace bolts to get in it. Alright, 
just like that. Now we tighten them to 90 foot pounds. And then it's spindle time. So I'll tighten them up. All right, got our spindle off. I went and pulled the caliper off just so it wasn't on there. So next thing is get this bolted on. And I know it's a little crusty dirty, but we'll take care of that later. Right now I just want to get her on the truck so we get turn it back into a roller. So I'll just clean it up and give her a little later. So it's probably gonna need new rotors and possibly calibers anyway. Uh they weren't stuck, but Let's see if we can get her thrown on here. Right. So, let's set her on the bottom one first. Like that. Get that started. And. Something like that. So next we'll have to go about getting our tie rod ends on, get these tightened down, cotter keys in, and we'll be ready for the other side. All right, so now we're ready to put our tie rod on. So basically, all I did was thread this on, you know, like one turn, and then it's the left hand. Well, on this end, one turn. Get them the same and then we just want to wind them in accordingly so we get bottomed out on the adjustment and we can adjust it after that which we'll call that good okay then this kit comes with a tapered spacer that'll go in your spindle. And then some, some sort of washer dealy that goes in each side of the tie rod. Like that. And then we're also gonna have this spacer underneath to make up the drop. So if you put drop spindles on here, this kit will still work. So we have a bolt and it says these will get torqued to 100 foot pounds, but kind of like my castle nut here and here, I'm not gonna tighten them just because it's probably gonna come back off. We'll see, but basically, should be able to do that. Slide this up. Oop. Tapered spacer in there. And then tighten her down. Just like that. It's actually fairly straight even, so snug him up and throw the other side together and then we're getting close get the other side put together and then we'll probably throw some wheels on it roll the back in back in and just throw that on so we can move it around well we got her all bolted together looks pretty good threw the tires on it threw the rear diff back under it that's going to change down the road but in order to make her a roller, I threw her back under there. I'm not sure what we're going to do back there. If we're just going to get new springs, then once they're probably not real good. So either we'll get new leaf springs or maybe we'll look into getting some Caltrax or something for the back. But I left everything loose, tie rods, ball joint. In case we want to do something there later, of course, it'll have to go to a alignment rack when we're all done to get her dialed in. But going to be a pretty nice ride I think. It does come with some extra stuff so we got tools for adjusting the shocks and then some motor mount bushings. It's got a tube on each side that then will slide in and you can build your own motor mount or I believe you can buy them from QA1 like 
big block, small block, LS even. So I might look into that. But other than that, it went good. Like I said, it was, I don't know, I had six, eight hours probably of actual working time in it. So it was a little easier since I didn't have cabin fenders on it, but it could definitely be done with all that stuff on it. So next on the, on the agenda is going to be probably getting a cab buttoned up and get that set on there so we can get to mounting that motor and tranny and stuff. So. But that is going to do her for this video. So you guys go ahead and subscribe, leave me a comment, but that's going to do her for today. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.